today we are going to see about the project hsc plan as i told you in the previous you know the life cycle of a uh, operating plant so i told you there are three important belongs to the epc engineering construction and commissioning in that project hsc plan covers engineering construction and commissioning but construction hsc plan focus on only the construction phase and the activities belongs to the construction phase so now we are going to cover the three project hsc plan which covers epc engineering uh, procurement construction and commissioning we, we we call it as epcc sometime because there is a commissioning involved so the first thing in any project hsc plan is introduction 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 in the sense uh, you know introduction of the project uh, like what is this project about for example uh, there is a project uh, i mean the project scope we used to describe in the introduction phase what is the project and what is the purpose of the project purpose uh, of the project in the sense the brief description of the project and the brief introduction of the company itself like uh, the operating company at nagpur aramco and uh, what is this field where we are going to work and what is the you know the level of uh, h2s there and what is uh, any other uh, criticalities in a brief way we introduce in the introduction introduction section the next thing the purpose of the hsc plan purpose of the hsc plan the purpose here here i am talking about the purpose purpose means what is this hsc plan for which phase it will cover all this information will be covered here you understood what i am trying to say the purpose of the hsc plan why we have to develop a hsc plan and which phase this hsc plan will because i told you we have two hsc plan uh, construction as well as the project now we are talking about the project so what is the purpose of the project hsc plan so which phase it will cover all these things will be captured in the purpose phase introduction it's introduction about the plan and the brief description of the project what project we are going to do and what is the description of the project in a very brief way we will uh, capture it in the introduction section and in the purpose what is the purpose of this document project hsc plan and what phase this project hsc plan will cover all these things will be captured in a brief way in the purpose okay next we have terms and definition terms and definition uh, terms and definition i mean uh, there will be abbreviations sometime you have to write like uh, in a short form ad and oc and not then you have to elaborate abu dhabi national oil company npcc national petroleum construction company or uh, like hsc health safety environment all these things will come here and definition of course there are some terms which is uh, very uh, critical in this part. for example we will put lti everyone knows lti means lost time injury but what is the definition of lti mtc medical treatment case so for example what is contractor what is uh, company what is the definition what is a vendor subcontractor all these kind of uh, terms will be defined under this section okay so while i say uh, these things if you have any clarification write it down at the end of the video i will just explain you all and of course the objectives objectives so here we are going to define about the objectives of the hsc plan what are what are what are all the things is intended uh, what are all the things to be achieved by using this uh, project hsc plan sometimes this objective is covered sometimes it is not covered in some of the document i have seen many documents in some places they don't cover this one they will keep all these three things i mean they they will go for the next one but uh, this is a uh, project hsc objectives you know what are all the objectives like zero lti zero mtc these are all the project objectives or uh, 100% reporting or near miss reporting these kind of things we will define here what is the objectives of this project 
objective in the sense i am not talking about the project construction objectives talking about the project hsc objectives because there is a hsc plan whatever i am saying you have to think in a hsc way uh, so what is the hsc objectives of the project just for example zero lti 100% reporting zero ntc and you know uh, zero spillage in oil spill is zero in terms of all these objectives will be defined here so next is very important here also there is one more steps reference based on which reference you are developing it for example we have some standards agnoc has some standards so we have to refer that standard and create this document for example there is a rule of uh, you know kpi or disciplinary action for example in the hsc plan you have to provide a disciplinary action you cannot uh, create your own ideas so you have to take the reference from the agnoc document you have to capture here and agnoc in the sense why i am saying uh, we are going to work in a ad hoc plan for example so we have to take ad hoc standard and whatever captured in the ad hoc standard we have to capture here okay so but you have to capture in the sense you should not have to write everything you have to write the reference number of the document here what are all the reference number what are all the document we are going to refer to create this hsc plan that documents and its reference number to be uh, given here in this section after that we have project hsc deliverable project hsc deliver this is very important project hsc deliverable we have to divide it into three phase engineering construction and commissioning so each phase we have a deliverable for example for engineering phase we have a deliverable like there is a separate engineering hsc plan there is a deliverable this is a project hsc plan that's why we are covering the deliverable of the three phase but here we have to cover the hsc deliverable for each phase like engineering we have a design i mean engineering hsc plan and we have uh, you know this uh, hscia phaser and uh, risk uh, studies like uh, has it over hidden with everything is a deliverable of engineering phase likewise for the construction we have uh, deliverables like you know construction hsc plan waste management plan environmental management plan and uh, welfare management plan heat stress management plan h2s management plan every deliverables will be a part of construction deliverables and likewise we have a commissioning uh, phase we have a commissioning deliverables sometime like commissioning hsc plan and the pssr all these things will be captured in commissioning deliverables since it's a project hsc plan we have to capture engineering construction and commissioning and each phase we have a separate separate deliverables that will be captured it is very important because based on this deliverables we are going to work on also then comes the normal items like uh, project hsc management system so project hsc management system okay so management system is nothing you know that uh, we have a uh, you know some elements of the management system which we need to capture that is going to be the rest of the elements for example we have a leadership and commitment policy uh, you know then we have uh, risk management uh, planning and uh, implementation audit all these comes here this is uh, iso 45001 and that element will be captured under here and uh, we have to just brief it in one page what is uh, you know phsc i mean project hsc management system but the detail will come below so for example first in leadership and i told you there are uh, six seven elements of hsc management system so you have to give a detail about each and every elements below for example the first element we have leadership and commitment leadership and commitment the first element 
So under leadership and commitment, we have uh, four different uh, type of sub subtitle. So first one we have this leadership and visibility. And second we have it KPI and we have disciplinary action and fourth we have HSE incentive so okay we can refer from this but uh, in short HSE element first, uh, uh, sorry, uh, HSE management system first element is leadership and commitment. Under leadership and commitment, we have leadership and visibility, KPIs, and we have disciplinary action, and we have HSE incentive scheme. Okay, what are these three? Leadership and uh, visibility. Leadership is visibility is nothing. If you go to site, for example, if you go to site, you have to be in a full PPE. If you are a manager, if you are a leader of a project, if you don't wear PPE and go like uh, Kalibali, let's say, no helmets, no, will people gonna follow? No, of course not. Why? Because as a leader, if you don't follow, how you expect others to follow? That is called leadership and visibility. Visib visibly, the leader should show himself that uh, he's 100% uh, HSE kind of guy and he's following the mandatory PP, so he is following the compliance and safety of the company. So that's what a leadership and uh, visibility. Uh, and next is KPI, key performance indicator. When it comes to the key performance indicator, we have two types of indicator: a leading and a lagging indicator. Leading indicator is like a proactive approach, like how many training hours should be. Then, uh, for example, I'm talking about there are a lot of leading indicators. For for example, our company is maintaining. We need to have 600, uh, you know, uh, training hours per million man hours. So we need to complete 600. Uh, sorry, 3,000. I'm sorry, 3,000. 3,000 man hours per million uh, man hours. Uh, 3,000 training hours per million man hours. So in one million man hours, you're supposed to complete 3,000 training hours. That is one of our K KPI. And second, uh, proactive KPI. We have, uh, you know, uh, like drill schedule. We have to complete at least five drill a week, a campaign, one per month, and incentive schemes. All these things proactively we are doing it. Likewise, we have a proactive. We do have a reactive KPI. That that means uh, proactive, reactive. It's okay, it's other term. So similar, leading and lagging. Leading means all these things: drill, uh, campaign incentive training hours all comes in the leading part when it comes to the lagging we have this uh, you know LTI uh, MTC RWC and uh, vehicle accident case near miss property damage fire incident all these things comes under the uh, lagging indicator so KPA has two parts leading indicator and lagging indicator and uh, leading indicator like drill and uh, incentive scheme campaigns, lagging, in, lagging indicator, uh, LTI, MTC, RWC, everything should be zero in a project. We are not expecting anything, so it should be all zero. So disciplinary action. Disciplinary action means, you know, in a project if someone is violating the, uh, you know, procedure or protocol while work, you are allowed to do some disciplinary action. It's not like immediately you have to terminate the guy. You have to, you know, our company process is like first someone is violating something. If you catch that guy, you are allowed to give a verbal warning. You cannot terminate this guy uh, immediately. You have to give a verbal warning. If you can catch the same guy second time, you can give a written warning that you have violated for the second time and you should not violate anymore. If uh, sub, uh, further violation will lead to the termination. So, Again, if the same guy is doing the same kind of violation or any violation, again, you are allowed to terminate this guy because despite giving you warnings and warnings, this guy is uh, not listening to you. They are, he is just acting weird. He is he's not uh, safety minded. So you can terminate this guy because if you don't take any action, this thing will continue again and again. Who knows at some point there will so bad will happen it may impact the reputation and it may create a huge loss for our company a loss not only in terms of production or equipment 
even human life is a big loss we are not afford to have this kind of thing so if someone is deliberately violating something you need to take action so the action is verbal warning written warning and the last is termination cars this guy can hold go home. and likewise when you are doing the disciplinary action you have to appreciate people sometimes isn't it only they will not uh, see safety like a policeman or uh, this guy is uh, uh, just uh, seeing all the bad things what about the good thing like we have raffle draws uh, we have uh, good observations hsc champions what what are we doing we have to appreciate these guys so we have to have a protocol to appreciate these people and we have to award them on monthly weekly it's up to us so leadership and commitment has four uh, sub items which is visibility and leadership kpis disciplinary action and incentive scheme which i told you just now the next thing is hsc policy hsc policy so our company has hsc policy so this policy is 100% mandatory to be followed for example some of the points in hsc policy like 100% training to be done 100% reporting so environmentally friendly and uh, there will not be any environmental damage the risks should be managed as low as reasonably practical so these are some of the policy which we are maintaining and this is called hsc policy it's a written statement from the top level management which shows the commitment of the top level management towards health and safety it just this is just a one paper uh, the top level for us our ceo will be signing this one this uh, document so it's nothing but a statement it's a written statement from the top level management showing the commitment towards the health and safety so i'll show you our uh, hsc policy so with all the necessary points whatever captured you can go through it so for every company they should have a hsc policy so that hsc policy should be captured in the project hsc plan as well and also we have organization resource and competence the next one resource and organization resource and competence organization resource and competence consists of uh, you know what are all the project responsibility of the key person of the project for example project manager project director hsc manager and uh, hsc engineer so there are some uh, you know as you know construction engineer construction officer hygiene officer uh, technical safety discipline leads and the ptw coordinator and we have engineering team procurement team logistics supervisor environmental officer mmro mmro is marine mammal observers and the project medical doctor medic all employees so all these persons responsibility should be defined in organization resource and competence and when i say responsibility it is not the responsibility towards the construction responsibility towards the safety because the project hc plan so here the responsibility everything belongs to the safety what is the responsibility of the project hsc manager towards the safety what is the responsibility of hsc manager towards the safety what is the responsibility of the project engineer towards the safety it goes this way down to the line of last employees who will actually work frontline people what is their uh, level of responsibility for the safety all these things will be captured in organization resource and competence next we have management of subcontractors and vendors so in short i will say subcon management and vendors management okay i will tell you a short difference between uh, subcontractor and vendor first subcontractor are those people who will work for us in executing the job for example if we have taken a big work which consists of civil work mechanical work or electrical work and pcc doesn't have a, i mean our company doesn't have a uh, you know civil uh, area that much i mean we have a, we have civil civil uh, workers but sometime 
those people uh, will be engaged in other activities sometimes so we have to manage in such a way that our job should go on so how we are going to do so we have to give this job to the subcontractor they will work for us in civil school you got my point so in that way we have to manage our work so subcontractors are those companies who work for us in executing our project because sometimes uh, we have plenty of project we have small manpower we cannot focus on all the work so we will manage the project from the top level but who's gonna work some other company we give job to some other company and they will come to our premises and work for us or not our premises they will come to our dog premises and work on behalf of us so that people called subcontractor who are vendors vendors are those people who has this equipments who sold some equipments for example uh, to execute uh, to execute a project we need several uh, you know equipments like ups a big ups pump motors all these things are electrical equipment and those who are selling those equipments are called vendors they are not uh, related to the subcontractor and vendor are two different parties subcontractor those who work for us vendor those who sell material for us uh, which helps in executing the project so how to manage uh, the subcontractor and vendors it is starting from you know pre qualification of this subcontractor vendors what are all the documents required just like how we are submitting document to the adnoc or any other operating company likewise this subcontractor and vendors they have to submit their document to us we will review their document how they are going to manage safety for their people because these documents we are going to submit to adnoc and they will see okay our company uh, has this this these things and they have to they will manage this work according to this document and same we have to see how our subcontractor is doing managing the safety so we will ask subcontractor this document we will ask subcontractor to submit their document to us and we will go through as adnoc is going through our document and we will go through subcontractor document to check if they are really complying with our policy or ad hoc policy or ad hoc standards everything if we have any comments we will give it to those people so management of uh, subcontractor and vendor in terms of hsc is very important so this is uh, we will provide some steps here how and what is our plan to manage a subcontractor and vendor here okay the next step training and competency this is very very important why in a project there will be many many people starting from the crane operator boat uh, master radiography uh, crane operators and uh, many 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 activities there will be and each an individual has to complete their own training for example I, as i said crane operator uh, boat masters dpa and uh, you know radiography personals and lifting supervisors grinder welder many activities are there and to do this activity there will be a specialized people who are very experienced in those activity so those people will have to undergo some training what are all those training we will capture here okay for example i am a safety officer i need to complete a dipos at least to get to this job so it will come here so safety officer should have a dipos so this will there will be a matrix some company like adno or aramco they have their own training matrix they will i mean uh, they some company i'm talking about they have their own training matrix they will give it to uh, the contractor but some company they don't have at that time we have to use our uh, knowledge our competence to get this training done for the people okay so and we have to sometimes uh, at a later stage uh, the company will ask us to provide a training and competency document procedure for the uh, project so we have to create a separate document based on the training and competency and there we will provide a competency matrix our training matrix so for who for which people what training we are going to provide all these things will be captured here so next hsc risk management number 13 hsc risk management HSC risk management so 
you know what are all the procedures are available to manage the risk for example we have hazard identification and risk assessment like uh, tra task risk assessment hazard identification and risk assessment we have jsa job safety analysis there are a lot of steps involved for risk assessment also we have permit to work to uh, you know risk manage the risk and we have uh, h2s management and we have action tracking registers and also we have workshop hsc studies hsc studies are in the engineering phase i told you already we have to conduct this uh, hsc studies like as of as it and below it all these things is a part of risk management so what are all the risk management studies we are going to do all will be captured here apart from risk assessment hazard identification everything so on this side so next we have hsc management number 14 hsc management so hsc management in construction and commissioning and engineering so as i said this project hsc plan for three phase engineering construction and commissioning so all these three how we are going to manage the hsc so that procedure in a brief way we will detail here okay because if it is a construction hsc plan we will focus on construction activity alone since it's a project hsc plan we have to concentrate on engineering construction and commissioning all three phases hsc management will be captured here in a very brief way we are not going to go into detail because in each and every phase we have a separate document to capture the hsc management but what we are going to do in a brief way we have to explain here okay next the planning and procedure so planning and procedure means uh, you know uh, what are all the procedure and plans we have to you know manage uh, the risk or any emergency and uh, you know mostly uh, related to hsc what are all the procedure we have for example we have safe system works safe system of work ssow for example uh, if we have a any activity let's say blasting and painting we have a grinding all this activity we have a safe system of i mean we have a procedure in place uh, which is designed in such a way that if we follow that procedure it is a very safe and secure job okay there is a procedure for each and every activity and if we follow this one there will be a very safe work there is no violation if we don't follow it definitely there will be a you know violation in the procedure okay and what are all the steps defined in that procedure you have to follow 100% that is called safe system of work also we have emergency management later in the construction phase there is a deliverable called emergency uh, you know management uh, procedure for example project emergency management for example in a project there will be a fire hazard there will be a release of h2s uh, apart from this a guy can hit himself and injure himself so what are you going to do how are you going to take this guy out safely to the medical center of if there is a h2s release there is 100 people working how you are going to bring these 100 people out of the location safely so all these things will be here in the construction document but here you have to just brief that uh, these are all the you know project uh, emergency we have identified and these are all the things will be done to manage this emergency and the detail will be explained in the construction phase of project emergency management plan so this will be here and there is life saving rules you know in that we have 10 life saving rules i'll talk about it later as a different topic this is a very important topic which i'll tell you later uh, there are 10 life saving rules in adnoc each life saving rules has its own uh, you know values for example no permit no work protect yourself against the fall when you are working at height uh, you know obtain authorization before overriding a safety critical equipments uh, when you drive seat belt should be worn all the time there are like 10 and we will see about it and these things will be here and also we have environmental management plan like emergency management plan here there will be environmental management plan like environmental in the sense what are all the proactive steps to manage the environment what is 
a base uh, management plan and uh, what are all uh, you know there is a environmental emergency like uh, abnormal release of something or abnormal spillage of oil how you are going to contain it what are, what procedure you have in place to contain this kind of emergency that's this environmental management plan as i said waste management plan how we are going to contain the waste how what is the color code of each because you should not mix each waste if there is a pipe skip with different colors if one is dedicated for the metal you cannot put a food waste in the metal or you cannot put the metal waste into the food so in that way you have to control the waste management plan also we have welfare management plan which is very important we have to manage the welfare of the people for example it's uh, different uh, deliverables in the construction welfare management plan of the project we will make a different separate document so in that uh, it will be captured like what are all the available things to check the welfare and hygiene of the people for example we have to give them internet facility to talk to the people talk to the family if they may be anywhere in india pakistan or anywhere they have to just talk to the family they will be very happy so this and food and quality water and you know the rooms where they sleep should be very clean and should be very neat you should not put 10 guys in the room like this really unhealthy and uh, it's not a good welfare if you put at least one guy in this room or two guys in this room this is okay this is fine but if you put 10 guys in this room it's not good they cannot this is a kind of welfare we are talking about and this is a separate document in the construction <laughs> phase as a project welfare management plan but here you have to at least show that okay we have a welfare management plan and this is the thing they are going to follow in a very very brief way and also we have a security management plan security management plan for example anyone is accessing your premises what are all the security arrangements you have done are you gonna check his id are you gonna put him you know like uh, some in some uh, cases if you come directly they won't allow you have to ask permission 24 hours earlier if you want to come inside so what kind of security arrangements you have it some there is a cctv monitoring in each and every place that's one of the security man management and also you have a security guy in each gate controlling the access to the security if you don't employ any security personnel anyone can come in go and out and come in and you will not have any, any controls on them now we have security in all over the place they are checking the documents they know everyone who is shiva who is fatima if the third person comes in they will stop it they will ask who are you why you are coming here then okay in that way we have to manage the security of the uh, you know company we have then implementation and monitoring so what are all the implementation and monitoring so we have performance uh, monitoring measurement and reporting so for example the uh, reporting of hse performance the observation the drill report a campaign report so all these things so we are receiving drill report from each and uh, every vessel and we are receiving the observation you are, we are you are receiving the catr from the vessel from each month so that is called implementation and uh, monitoring also implementation and we are doing this trend analysis that's called monitoring because uh, in each and every vessel they will send you like 50 50 observation so collectively we are getting like 1000 1200 observation last month and you did the trend analysis to see where we are lagging where is the area of concern where we need to improve ourselves so all these things will be coming here also we have uh, you know stop work authority incident investigation and uh, management of change stop work authority we have it our company has a stop work, stop work authority uh, like uh, even if uh, regarding your uh, top level management guy or uh, labor level frontline guy if you don't if you feel the work is unsafe you are al allowed to stop the work no one will come and ask you why you stop the work no because you feel it's unsafe but there should be a logic of course you don't uh, uh, you know stop uh, the work which is happening in a good way of course so that kind of things uh, and we have investigation and uh, reporting procedure we have a uh, in adnoc or any operating company they will have their own investigation procedure and that investigation procedure uh, briefly we have to capture here so why because we are going to work on their premises so that's why we have to comply with that if npcc has our own investigation procedure if some company is uh, okay and they are going to work in our yard 
they have to comply with our procedure. We will not allow them to comply with their procedure. Likewise, if we work in any operating company, end user company like Adnok or Aramco, they will not allow our procedure to be implemented in their premises. They will ask us to implement their procedure. So this is what it is. So audit and review. Okay, we did all. We did all. We are implementing, we are monitoring everything. If my friend is implementing and I am the one who is monitoring, I would say everything is good, perfect. We are maintaining good, isn't it? But something is going bad. Because I am the friend, if I tell it's bad, he's gonna get kicked out, maybe. So that's why what the, I will do, I would say, okay, everything is perfect to the management. But management will not believe. They will come for an audit. They will come and check this all record, what we are saying here is perfect or not are we really getting the drill report because here i told in the objective section that we have to have this uh, kpi kpi objectives so 100 percent so kpi leading indicators lagging indicators like uh, we have every supervisor has to submit two observation each week so we have like uh, you know uh, some observation month so we have drill five drill each month one campaign each month, audit, four audit each month. So we know all this schedule. And I say monitoring and implementation, everything, they are following it. I'm receiving the report. But management, sometimes they will not believe. They will come to the site and they will check. Okay, that's called audit. They will check if what report we are doing is perfectly working in a systematic way or not. If they found something wrong, they will, you know, they will, uh, make some suggestion, corrective action. So we have to rectify the corrective action. We have to implement the corrective action and we have to submit to the management the corrective action report. So once the corrective action report is submitted, sometimes they will come to the site to do the follow-up audit. So we can say, okay, this, uh, this uh, operator or this vehicle doesn't have a seat belt. If they have found it somewhere in the you know, walkthrough, and they have given the corrective action like you know, I mean seat belt to be installed in this vehicle as I'm an implementer I would say it's already implemented I would say but sometimes management will not believe they will come as a follow-up audit to check what corrective action has been given is implemented or not so after that appendix appendix is nothing but you know there will be a bunch of checklists you know uh, I have given a lot of things uh, like implementing and monitoring. There is a checklist, there is a format for it. So all formats, everything will come here one by one by one by one by one. You got my point. You have to, you know, come one by one by one by one here to uh, implement all the, you know, uh, so far what we have discussed. So everything, if there is any checklist involved, if there is any format in involved, for example, here we have say risk management, there should be a JSA, RA, risk assessment, everything. So what kind of risk assessment? There is a sample checklist here in the appendix. So it's just a quick reference how we do it. So this is project HSC plan in very detail. I have explained you, but you know, I will share with you the document of it. Just go through it. And this is the content and you will get to know a lot about it once you go through it. And if you have any uh, clarification uh, let me know thanks for watching the video thank you